For a challenge, I decided to turn my Frostpunk 2 city into a pure utopia and lead it into a prosperous future. I had to gather an insane amount of resources while fighting crime, poverty, rebellions and the ever-present fear of freezing to death when the next snowstorm hits. The people were dying, the councilmen were bickering and the children were turning feral. But I had a plan how to turn this frozen cesspit into a frozen heaven on earth and here's how I did it. I began building my utopia in a city nestled below a hanging rock where our collective dream to create a brighter future for humanity was enkindled. We started small, 8,000 people, 4,800 of those available as workforce. We had some basic materials stockpiled, but there was not enough shelter for everyone and the food was running out, and since this wasn't a Slavic city, we couldn't substitute breakfast with vodka, so I decided to focus on grub first. I sent out the workers to break the ice towards the nearest fertile soil patch while also building an extraction district nearby to gather more building prefabs. I also assigned a housing district to be built and by then people started complaining that it's cold. Look, I don't know if this city has windows, but if it does, then these fuckers should just look through one and see that it's ice age outside, of course it's fucking cold. But I listened to them and dedicated the district towards extracting steam power for our generator. And by then, I saw that the people kinda had a point. It's gonna take 7 weeks for our people to freeze, let's see if we can fix that. We soon had steam available, alas my generator wasn't capable of using it. So I sent it into overdrive while building a research institute which gave me the access to the idea tree where I decided to unlock adaptive pumps for our generator. Alas, the research time was estimated 10 weeks while our coal reserves had a week left. So in panic, I decided to break the ice to the nearby coal deposits. And while the generator ran cold, I accepted the consequences of my actions. A couple of deaths never bothered anybody, right? We can fix this easy. The new coal district began pumping the heat back into the city and with that crisis averted, I decided to begin working towards actually not running out of food. My research then finished and so did the first food producing district and I began working on housing isolation idea next. So you want me to put asbestos in everybody's house and the whole city agrees with us. Amazing. Clearly these people were the IQ level of your average US citizen, but who was I to say no to them? Next I celebrated more people freezing to death by building the adaptive pumps, which allowed our generator to produce heat via steam. That's gonna help us survive for a bit longer. But not much longer if I kept on ignoring our need for materials. So I built another extraction district to mine the nearby frozen forests. I also assigned the council hall to be built, because what the city needed was more corrupt politicians. And if you are afraid that the corrupt politicians are spying on you and stealing your heat stamps, fear no more because Surfshark VPN is here to keep you safe online by encrypting all your private information and keeping your online activity hidden from all evil men in power. Look, if you never used a VPN before, worry not, because even I managed to set it up with ease and I'm never going back. You see, I live in a third world country called Slovenia and now the Champions League is back during the week. Without a VPN, you bet the only game I get to watch is on washed up Barcelona losing to a second-rate French team again. But with Surfshark, I'm only one click away from accessing British streams, so I can enjoy watching City and Arsenal have boring goalless draws against Italians. Okay, fair, those games were pretty dog, but it was dog I chose to watch because with Surfshark VPN, I could. You can also connect an unlimited amount of devices to your account and stay safe at home or on the go forever, especially if you use the Surfshark antivirus as well. They have over 3,000 servers in more than 100 countries and grade 24 7 customer support. And of course, if for some reason you're not satisfied with Surfshark, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee policy. So don't hesitate. Get your Surfshark VPN today and use my link in the description with the promo code CocoPlace to get the extra 4 months of Surfshark for free. Now let's get back to my city, where the council gathered for the first time and I proposed a new law to increase our food production. I had to promise the laborers to pass another law in the future and then we went for it. Our first vote is going through and oh, we smell smashed it. We then finished another residential district and I began researching improved coal mines. I then broke the ice towards the frozen waste station which allowed me to build a logistics district. The council then passed another law fulfilling my promise to the laborers and keeping the stupid masses satisfied and distracted with small things, a trick I learned from the government. The logistic districts was then completed and we now had access to the frostland, at which point a new faction was formed in the city. They want a brighter tomorrow, well good luck with that. I sent my first frostland teams to explore the nearby planes while building a new food district in the city. The council then voted on a new law that would give me more money, but I had to bribe the laborers again by allowing them to choose the next vote. At this point, children began causing trouble in the city. You know what we need to do? We need to send children to the mines, because Minecraft told us that children 
crave the mines. But since I was a good steward, I allowed them free choice. Just like in Poland when boys who turn 15 have a free choice between becoming a femboy or a racist. My explorers brought back some cores, then the laborers pushed for a supported quarantine law, which passed without me having to influence anyone, which made the factions like me even more. And just in time before the cold season hit the city, and our heat demand went up. It didn't help that I still haven't built enough shelter for everyone, but I tried to remedy that by building into a natural crevasse. And like the natural crevasses they were, the children in my city clearly picked racism over becoming a fanboy, but now at least they had a place to live. Finally, we have enough shelter for the people. It only took us 97 weeks of living out here in the cold. Menders were so happy with this development, they started rallying in my support. So I told them to drum up some more children to die in the coal mines. My explorers found a batch of people living in the wild, so I invited them in with the pretense of good warm living, hiding the fact my city still had a lot of issues. But at least we passed the law that only the productive outsiders could come in, while the sick, elderly and the hobos remained bared from the utopia I was building. With the new people came new problems, and after a hundred weeks my stockpiles needed to build a prosperous future were looking like shit. So I had a great idea to introduce emergency shifts to fulfill the food demands, which actually made the laborers happy. So at this point I was confident I could even legalize bones in boneless wings and they'd eat them right out of my hands while praising how sweet my shit smells. Which was good as it started getting even colder. A whiteout is coming in 80 weeks? Oh boy. Oh boy indeed, so to prepare I began introducing emergency shifts in the coal mines as well, and looking at the generator upgrades. At this point the children were starting going feral, and the crime was rampant, so I promised to fix it soon TM, because the kids were now dying, which was kinda bad for my utopic propaganda. As on cue, the Venturers faction formed in opposition to Menders, and they started radicalizing right away. My new industrial district began pumping prefabs into the city, and I added a salvaging factory to it, to get some more good to the people. Apparently the crime was a little bit of a problem at this point, but let's be real, no utopia was ever built without breaking some eggs. I then made sure the kids would go to the mines instead of playing in the streets, which made everyone rejoice. I am admired by the merchants, you love to see it. Everyone beside the venturers, so I allowed them to liberate their youth. The council then decided to mark everyone who was even slightly sick with a badge of shame, which seemed like a great idea and would definitely never lead to more tension. Remember to make sure your contagion badge is visible at all times. But at least for now, the venturers were satisfied. Menders rallies began spreading as the city began to grow, and I added adaptive injectors to my generator, in preparation for the coming whiteout while ending the emergency shifts in the coal mines, to the cries of Minecraft addicted children everywhere. For some reason, the people were not happy with their new shame badges, which made my supporters flee faster than a racist YouTuber can send out a pre-recorded apology video. My Frostland teams then repaired a sunken automaton they found in the wild, adding it to my workforce. Alas, the workforce was starting to grow soft, and we couldn't have that in my utopia. Look, this is rough, we're just trying to survive here. We cannot allow the families to be together. No, we're gonna be strict. I then began research to fix our food issues, which was slightly too late. Oh, we're out of food now. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> I totally forgot to look at this. But with some casual emergency shifts, we were soon back into the green, and I even tried building a shelter for everyone before the big storm hit. I then proposed a law to stab dead people, which for some reason barely passed, and I began building new hothouses so we could maybe prevent all the death that came with that. I also sent my frost teams out to hunt a huge herd nearby, which definitely helped with our food issues. Man, look at the food surplus. That is amazing. I also had to allow the liberated youth to practice art, so the venturers would be less bitchy. And it totally paid off. Ah yes, the youth built us a monument from a tangled knot of metal with dismantled toys. Amazing. Art. Not even once. I bumped up our materials intake to the point I needed a new stockpile for them. Then our population increased just before the big storm, causing people to be left outside without shelter. And so the whiteout hit us. The temperatures plummeted to minus 70 degrees and our food supplies froze over. With a new heat demand, we only had enough coal for 19 weeks. So like a good dictator I was, I sent people to death. Would have thought that working after hours would just kill you. 
Huh? We could do nothing but sit at home and research while the storm lasted, watching the death count rise, but that was a sacrifice I was willing to make. And it certainly got even worse when people started freezing to death because someone didn't build enough shelters. But to be honest, that was just natural selection. If you're too poor to afford a home, well, fuck you, I guess. But after 30 weeks, it was finally over. And it's down to minus 30 only now. We have actually survived the whiteout. I stopped the emergency shifts, built a new logistics bay which bumped my frostland teams up to 30. Then I researched deep melting drills that would give me access to unlimited resources on the map. The temperatures started dropping again soon though, so I kept on upgrading the city and we celebrated our first melting drill in the food district. That way this district is never gonna run out of food. That made the venturers happy for once, so I told them to drum up some more money for me and then we hit an important first for the city. For the first time, all of these are in the green you love to see it. So I accepted more people into the city and quickly built a new residential district so we wouldn't dip out of the green again. Then we continued exploring the frozen lands around the city in search of more materials and workforce because my slaves, I mean workers, were growing scars. And so we found the crater, a suitable place for a future colony, but I wanted to fix our utopia first by replacing the working people with AI, because the working people were starting to get soft and I could allow none of that. This boy is not cut out for a to be a blacksmith. We're gonna stay firm. That boy is gonna be a blacksmith. We now actually had enough materials for a prosperous future, so I knew I was on the right path. Alas, the nature kept on trying to screw me over, and we were suddenly losing the coal reserves. So I quickly built a new geothermal plant, which brought new people to the city. Population increased again. Oh, minus 37? Oh, that's a lot. My scouts then found an old imperial smelter with a deposit of millions of useful materials. So I decided to build a permanent trail to it, which took five weeks to finish. Oh, imperial smelter is now active. We are getting so much. Alas, that wasn't enough to keep us in the green, because my old material deposit ran out of juice, so I had to demolish it so I could then rebuild it on an unlimited resource patch. I added the deep melting drill to it and then I found the most important research ever. You know what? This seems like a great idea. City run alcohol shops and we get money. It then actually got slightly warmer, which seemed like a great idea to start building a new housing district now that all the poor people froze away. I then connected the crater to our road network and when my research finished, the laborers were instantly on that new law. City run alcohol shops proposed by laborers, I believe you. The city was now turning into a proper Slavic town, and everyone was for it, which definitely showed we hit another milestone on our road to prosperous future. I then built another salvaging factory to boost our goods output, which was still the lowest when it came to stockpiling for the future, and that made the venturers happy again. But well, people want me to promote more alcohol use in the city. You know what? Go for it, boys. Go for it. With alcohol expansion came more money in my bank account. And since alcohol never hurt nobody, I was confident this will never lead to any trouble. I kept on upgrading my residential districts. Alas, we were still lacking on shelter. But with an icebound vessel found by my scouts, at least we were not lacking on coal. Oh, we got even more people living in here. Oh, uh, shelter. Shelter is the biggest problem. The immigrants certainly set me back again, but with our food surplus, at least they didn't need to resort to eating cats and dogs like the residents of Springfield. But like the residents of Springfield, my people desired I guide them myself. 67 required for this one? Oh, that's a lot. Oh, we barely passed. Let's go. Another step towards true American democracy, which made the people celebrate my leadership and eternal wisdom, as I never even touch healthcare once in over 300 weeks into the playthrough, because healthcare is for commies. 40 weeks to build a hospital. We haven't even researched the hospitals yet. <laughs> for some reason. But at least I almost fixed the housing market and the government-run alcoholic shops were doing great. With everything in the green again, it was only natural for the merchants to start causing issues. But I ignored them and went to figure out what a hospital is. I then expanded the logistics and added a survivalist headquarters to it for safer exploration. And via safer exploration, we met a community at Hot Springs who had some tasks for us before they were ready to trade. At this point, the hospital research finally finished and I assigned it to 
be built in the city center. With that promise kept, I then continued my own propaganda, which went easily with my hand carefully guiding the voting process. But then shit hit the fan again. The storm hits the city, we're back to white out. Even though it was now minus 80 outside, we had enough cold to weather the storm, although I was slightly worried for my Frostland teams caught outside. There was much else to do while waiting for it to pass other than debate in the council, think about research and pray my resources don't run out before the storm ends. And since idle hands are the gooner's plaything, Mender soon found a new way to brain rot the city. We have a radical idea from Mender's to research Apex workers. Making sure only the strongest get paid jobs and rest live in squalor was exactly the kind of utopia I was trying to build. And when the Menders proposed that law to the council, I was all for it. So this is a drastic step towards adaptation. People are gonna be mad about this. I kinda like it. And so our first radical law passed with flying colors, and the people rejoiced at not having to work unless they were jacked. The storm passed at the start of week 400, although it seemed that the cold was not leaving anytime soon, just like that uncle who comes over once a year for Christmas and makes the liquor cabinet his own. Oh, we just got a lot more people. Venturers were not happy with that, but they were more than happy to let me know about their unhappiness. I quickly began building more houses for the new people in hopes of fixing the squalor they lived in. Menders were very enthusiastic about the utopia we were almost living in and how well we were adapting to living in the cold. Doctors began complaining next, which was nothing new to me because that's all they do on our national TV these days. Venturers followed suit because clearly they were the weak ones, and in my city only the jacked up chads were allowed to work. So to fix that issue, I began researching watchtowers, which quickly made them disperse, but now Menders had an issue with that. Menders are going really, really mad now. Oh boy. Oh boy indeed, especially after I allowed labor oversight to pass, which made the tensions rise even higher in the city. I then tried fixing our crime problems with more watchtowers and researching the surveillance lab, because the big brother is always watching. But what the big B himself couldn't foresee were the casualties caused by the Apex workers program. Uh, we're not gonna outlaw them, we're gonna have to allow them. Look, this is the path we've taken, this is the path we're gonna walk. But hey, at least the crime in the city was now gone, and even though we were hitting minus 60s now, the city was on the right path to prosperity. With the new enforcers in the city, the rallies soon ended, but a new problem hit when one of our food districts ran out of fertile soil. But with enough prefabs, my Frostland teams fixed a mushroom cave nearby, which bumped us back into the green even though our population increased again. I then connected the hot springs to our road network, allowing our sick and wounded to heal faster. The last of the major problems I needed to fix was squalor. I researched moss filtration towers to improve the air in the city because for some reason people didn't enjoy breathing the toxic fumes plumbing from our industrial districts. We then passed the communal parenthood law. We don't need children, the city does. Yes, that's exactly how I want to do this. And those who disagreed with the law, we sent to colonize the crater. At this point, we actually hit our goal for good stockpiled, and with the first moss filtration towers built, the squalor began diminishing across the city. So the only thing we were missing was food. Alas, with the 3,000 people exiled to the cold crater, I was supposed to actually take care of them as well. Actually actually send them some spare goods, but of course no food. We needed that for our Apex chats. We then passed another important law. And Steward's Militia is gonna pass, some people gonna hate me. That's fine. The Venturers yet again hated that, but the joke was on them, because we actually hit our last prosperous stockpile goal and the future was here. Hey, we did it! Our ambition is fulfilled, we have built a future. You'll love to see it. I could continue making this world a better place, but with more than 20,000 people living in my utopia, my job here was done. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and thank you everyone for watching.